Yeah, so my name is uh, my name is Matt Andrews. Um, I'm from the United States, Maryland, my state, born and raised. Um, I I do a show on on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. It's called Matt Chats. It's the reason it's that way is because it goes Matt Chats with uh, insert name. Um, we're filming episode number twenty seven right now on your live stream. Um, Honored. The guest list is quite is quite uh quite impressive for for a nobody like myself as I, myself I think. But Vosh, I think you're like the first official, probably self described left winger. I guess. Um, we've had we've had an adult film star on who called herself a conservative. Yeah, that, I don't know if I agree with that. Well, that but was we've one had, of the things I think that intrigued me. I saw that your list of um the people you had spoken to, the very first of which was Milo Yiannopoulos. That's a pretty big first get for a conversation. Yeah, for sure. So um, so I, I think it's uh, necessary to give a little bit of background. So I got into politics, I guess when. Most people, I'm 20 years old. Most people oh, my hello. age. Just one moment, sorry. Hello, Doe. Uh, thank you for rating everyone. Uh, sorry, just acknowledging the uh, no, fine folks. Um, so, so I got into, I guess, like politics culture. Um, I guess around like 2015, 2016, and like like people my age. I mean, I am I am a right winger. I was, but I, I kind of got hooked by the the Ben Shapiro kind of people. Um, I'm not a fan of Ben Shapiro now mm -hmm. nearly as much anyway. But the um, the the kind of idea I fell in love with was the was the uh, like the free speech thing I guess like um, everyone should be included let everyone talk I think people have horrible beliefs obviously but but then I found that Ben Shapiro kind of blacklisted people uh, refused to talk to people who were more I guess dangerous both on the right and the left right. Um, and I'm not a big fan of that so um, but I, I think you uh, you know I think you deserve a platform here as much as any one of my past guests. I appreciate and, uh, that. Thank you. I, yeah, I'd, I'd love I'd, to kind of pick your brain a little bit. So. I'd like to say I do. Uh, you know, I'd like to believe that I contribute uh, a thing or two. Um, it, that's my opinion. I'm biased, of course. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I, I do. I'm always happy to speak. You know, there, there are myriad lefty podcasts that want to talk to me. So I'm always happy to talk with a more ideologically diverse crowd. Do you do you typically accept invites from just anyone like myself? Or because I mean, I've only I just hit a thousand subs. I'm not that big. But do you typically... Um do yeah. podcasts yeah well i mean obviously clout is a little bit of a factor i mean you know right. uh i i won't uh deny that it's gotta that, be worth your time yeah you're right right yeah but uh, i mean if it's a good conversation i think that's worthwhile in its own at least to an extent um also i think um i'm i'm honestly more limited by my social energy than anything if when i'm choosing out like which podcast to accept and deny usually the overwhelming factor is do i want to do do i want to talk to a person on tuesday or do i do i or or do i not you know and that and right. that's honest to god that is the biggest barrier yeah yeah that makes sense um it's funny actually because i, I do want to say uh, it is admirable that you would do this podcast i've had right wingers deny it um deny doing it simply because i had people they didn't like on so to have someone who is probably more opposed to my guest come on is kind of impressive i had at sebastian gorka who i've never been real big on but i dm'd him on twitter uh just because i was sending out a whole bunch of invites and he said oh you had laura loomer on your show so no and that's like straight up what he said like which i kind of do like 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 give me Coward. a response or ignore me but don't like string me on which i had dave rubin do dave rubin and his assistant strung me on for an entire year like they were like okay next month reach out next month and then finally I guess she had finally brought it by Dave in December, and he was like, "He was like, no, I'm not doing that show." So Massive coward. Like, Dave, uh, uh, Ruben is a huge coward. I, I, I do, I do know this. The stringing along thing. It's happened to me as well. I, I mean, of course, we're we're different. I'm looking for explicitly adversarial conversations usually with these guys, but um, yeah, yeah I, I try not to do that. When I when I put you off for a month, it it was because last month. No, no, yeah, you were absolutely fine, and I have no problem reaching out, but. Yeah, the Dave Ruthman thing pissed me off because it was yeah. just like, don't don't string me on and then that, like not even try. That's what it is. It's like it's like I would rather you either just ignore me in the beginning, or say no, you know, like just decline. Well, I swear like, to I you, I'm going to try very hard during this conversation. Okay, okay, very cool. Well, Vosh, is that where you go by Vosh? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. So Vosh to some people. Okay. Okay, Vosh, thank you for joining us and thank you for having me on your live stream. Uh, yeah, um, no, the, the pleasure is entirely mine. Sorry, I um, didn't know if you're going to lead into another segue. I am uh, happy to be speaking to you in this fine day. Uh, it's cold, uh, and I'm, I'm hoping to warm myself in the, in the fires of good discourse. 
<laughs> well, my, my little brother actually was the one who suggested I reach out to you. He's, he was um, a fan for a long time. I think he stopped. Um, I don't know if he was necessarily turned off to your channel or he just got busy because he's been back in school and stuff, but he was the one who recommended that I do this. I don't know much about you. I've heard things. I've seen clips on Twitter, of course. And of course, um, and uh, a lot of my followers have kind of suggested I ask certain things. And of course, they've they've had things to say about you, but I'm sure. But uh, well, but I don't we'll, take it. Uh, I don't take it personally about your brother. You know, that's the that's the final stage in the 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 Vosh fan uh, transformation. <laughs> you know, they turn into a butterfly and fly off. I um no no yeah I I imagine it feels like so often when I talk with people who don't know a ton of stuff about me, I I always feel like the the information they have or the questions they bring to me are, are like of some other person. You know. Like there's some yeah, right. strange amalgam of half heard info and rumors that have sort of mor morphed into a, a conscious being that they assume I am, but we're actually two separate people. So um, whatever, however you want to take it, I'm fine. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, past couple, past like two days, really. I mean, once you had confirmed kind of a date time, I, I went out and I said, this is my next scheduled interview, topics, questions, which is what I usually do for everyone because... I tend to not know too much about the people I interview, which is maybe a poor uh, habit of mine, but I actually like going into things without any preparation whatsoever. I think it's more fun. I think it's more fair to you, really, because I have no clue. I mean, of course, I've heard things, and we'll, we'll, I'll preface anything I ask with, I heard this or I saw this, but, you know, of course, I don't know the context. I don't know your past. Um, I don't really watch your channel. I, I, I went into a stream a couple of days ago. That's no, about it, so. Of course, no, of course. I, um... Uh, no, I completely understand. I respect it as well. I generally try to do as little research into a video or a topic or a person as possible before responding to a video of theirs, because, um, well, not only is it kind of fun to just have to do it all there on the fly, you know, but I think yeah. there's also a, um, a value in referring specifically to the content of the video rather than to it plus like 17 other things you've, that have kind of merged together in, in your head into some sort of collective uh effigy that you need to burn uh, i think it's a little purer in that respect all right well we'll i guess officially get started here um we had the we had the verdict announced in the car announcing yesterday mm -hmm. i guess i guess uh briefly sum it up because i'm sure you've gone into this on your stream um but kind of i guess give your post verdict announcement um take on that i guess yeah well, I don't think Kyle should have been there. Uh, I think it was morally wrong of him to respond to those protests in the way that he did. That vigilantism shit never actually makes communities safer. The evidence suggests the opposite. But once he actually got... That doesn't make it illegal, mind. But once he actually got there, you know, uh, the specific circumstances of the case... I was 50-50 on um, whether or not self-defense was going to fly. Uh, you know, um, self-defense uh, claims are really, really, really circumstance-specific. I'm not a lawyer. I figured it could go either way. Uh, my main concern with the verdict is that his exoneration is going to encourage comparable behavior from other folks. You know, this vigilantism bordering, at least for some, towards stochastic terrorism. I think that could enable a lot of really bad shit. So it, it, hopefully it doesn't lead to like a bunch of other Rittenhouse-type situations, uh, because that would be pretty bad, I think. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was, I was saying that I was talking to my little brother, the same one who recommended you, uh, I think yesterday. What I was saying was that, um, you know, whether you say what you want about him, you know, being there, crossing state lines, whatever you want. If my, my concern, similar to yours, is if people all of a sudden who are not as trained, I mean, Kyle, Kyle seemed to be pretty, pretty trained, pretty well trained with that, with that weapon. I mean, he, the fact that he didn't miss or shoot someone else accidentally or, you know, it kind of is impressive. And, I, and I'm, I'm worried that people who are not um, at his level might go out. Uh, typically, like the TAC gear LARPer crowd um, yeah. might be a little more trigger happy against, against protesters. But oh, yeah. I mean, at the same time, I, don't, I didn't want anyone there, really. I didn't want um, the, the people there who were burning things down or um, being violent in any manner. So for me, it's like... But, it's, it's like, you know how some people, like the really Christian types, they'll use prayer candles to heal people who are sick? 
I'm not sure I've heard much about that, but we'll go. Uh, just with it. let's just say let's just say there is a person. It it doesn't matter. Right. Hypotheticals, you know. Right. Uh, if you have somebody like that, let's say you have a celebrity, you know, and they're like, uh, yeah, I have uh, I I have some crazy disease, and I'm gonna heal myself with these candles. Fuck modern medicine. I don't give a shit about modern medicine, you know. Mm. And then they actually live, like they get better. Now, miraculous, sure. Is it good that they're alive? Yeah, but. I got to worry about the discourse that's going to inspire, you know, or like homeopathy treatments. Like, is it good they're alive? Yeah, I'm glad they're alive. I don't think they deserve to die just because I disagree with their medical methods. But now there are going to be a bunch of other people doing that instead of getting proper medical treatment. And, you know, that could be <laughs> that could actually be quite harmful. Do you think um, do you think Kyle would be do you think some defamation lawsuits that are probably going to happen are um do you think that those will look good for Kyle? Do you think he should sue? Do you think it is a, I guess my question would be, do you think that certain media corporations or public figures or government officials have slandered him in any way? Um, to, to meet the legal standard against a public figure? No, I would be, ex I, I would be shocked beyond belief of any of those result in a, um, in, in a settlement towards Kyle. Uh, the, the, so you could argue the media has been unkind to him, uh, but in order for them to meet the definition of slander, it would have to be knowingly false information that could correspond provably to damages. And I don't even know what you could find. I mean, they've said he's like, like there are some that say he's like white supremacist or whatever, but that wouldn't even come close to me in the bar. I mean, these days, everyone's calling everyone else everything. You know, Candace Owens is calling all Democrats. Right. I mean, you, you could if, if if that sets a bar for slander, that shit gets applied to everyone. Every single person in the United States gets slapped with that lawsuit the moment that becomes precedent. So I kind uh, of think I kind of hope it does, though. Uh, you think I th so? I think. Well, I think my problem is there is a severe problem with the the labeling and ruining of people's lives. Um, like I like I get it. I guess if you're if you're calling someone a white supremacist and it's not provably false, whatever. But like these things are are ruining people's. Lives. Let's say because because Vosh, I believe I, I watched. I did watch a, a clip of you. Uh, speaking on the the Richard Spencer punching uh, years ago. And, oh, did, um, uh, which uh, uh, what did I say? I think my p opinions have changed over the past three years. But what, okay, what did so, I say there? Uh, I think uh, you said that. I, I think it was a clip of you kind of saying that if someone were to to push for mass genocide of a certain race, that is okay to hit them in Minecraft or something like that. I think it was like a insinuation that Richard Spencer was deservedly hit. Oh yeah. Oh, I've said way worse stuff than that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll, I'll stand I'm sure. By that. I'm, uh, it's right. It, okay, right. So yeah, it's about the the outcomes you get from that. I can elaborate on that when you're done. Okay. So if you say and, and the and the phrase everyone uses is punch a Nazi, it's okay to punch a Nazi. So when but when that when everyone starts using that term, and people who might not be paying attention as much all of a sudden latch onto that, like this person is a Nazi, and they also think it's okay to punch a Nazi, but this person doesn't necessarily believe in genocide or is uh is pro genocide in any way or is or is trying to move toward that now they may be assaulted in public like i i have a problem with the i hate to, i hate to use the term slippery slope because i know it's technically like a fallacy or whatever but I, I am worried about the the gates that that those things open oh yeah for sure well what we're so what we're talking about here are two um are are, are two inevitable but kind of uncomfortable realities of living in the modern world on one hand, we've got free speech, and a loosening of libel and slander laws could, in some ways, be beneficial because people do get fucked over by borderline libelous or slanderous shit being thrown their way from media corporations that don't give a fuck, you know. Uh, you know, uh, Fox News fucked around and didn't find out because they retracted their claims about Dominion, OAN and Newsmax didn't, and now they are finding out to the tune of billions. Uh, so, you know, we, there, there is a, these laws we have, you know, for, for reasons to an extent, you could loosen them and there would be some benefits, but it would also, I think, provide a pretty strong chilling effect on our ability to engage in discourse, especially with stuff like calling people white supremacists, because a lot of that is inference, you know, it's also kind of theory driven, like, well, what is a white supremacist? And well, are you talking to an academic or like Joe Plummer? You know, it's, we're going to have different definitions, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's a lie. It's just complicated. With, with the Richard Spencer thing, we're talking about political violence, first and foremost, which I just think is a reality of living in the world we do. And I don't know if we can do much about its existence outside, be honest in how we're using it. The thing that gets me a little bit is like, we're all pro-political violence, right? As long as it's legitimized by the state. But we all understand, of course, that the state makes mistakes. The state is not uh, always as diligent as it should be in fighting evil. 
and sometimes they will fight in favor of evil. I mean, we know this, slavery, etc. So the real question is, in what instances is political violence justifiable outside the purview of state-mandated, you know, violence? And that's a very difficult question to answer, but I would say, for example, in like a pre-Nazi Germany, if Jews who kind of saw the writing on the wall wanted to run around like stabbing future Nazi officials in the back, I mean, I'm, yeah. In, in retrospect, at least, in hindsight, I could not condemn them for that behavior. But that would have been illegal. I mean, that would have been murder. So right. it's a complicated question. Yeah, I mean... Uh... I mean, so so what I guess would be the difference between the the kid, the Covington kid at the March for Life, because he did win big on his on his defamation lawsuits, I believe. Uh, I think it was like two hundred fifty million dollars or something like that. And I believe that he was treated better than Kyle Rittenhouse has been. The Covington and, um, I'm not kid, a big fan the, of the Covington kid, but the, the, <clears throat> this was that cunty looking smiling kid, right? Yeah. The the red the the this the the smug looking one. Yes. Yeah, this was pretty fucking stupid. Washington Post settles quarter billion dollar suit. God damn. I gotta look yeah. smug on camera one day. Holy shit. Yeah, I think um, botched coverage. I, I would need to know the specifics of the case um, mm. because I didn't, I didn't follow this when it was happening. I, I, would, I would need to know what claims they made. I don't think that for something like calling Kyle Rittenhouse a white supremacist, I don't think that would trip the bar. But I think with, with, with the, the grinning kid, they like really fucked up coverage. Like the... The libs on MSNBC were like frothing, uh, like like people got really mad over it. You know, fuck. At least Rittenhouse killed people at a protest. I mean, at least that's you know, there's something there. But that, yeah, I don't know. I'd have to look back at that. See, well, I don't know. Like, I guess back to saying I would, I wish there were more laws on this stuff. I think it's a, I think it's a big problem when. Because, I mean, of course, I've talked with people about this case, especially yesterday when the verdict came out, and interacting with people who might not be paying attention as much or be on Twitter or follow the same people you and I do. Um, when they came up and were like, that white, that, that racist boy just got off, a lot of them were saying that he's killed black people. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Joe Biden himself called the kid, I think, a white nationalist or white supremacist in his uh, campaign ad. Or at least inferred it. He had a video of White, uh, of uh, of Kyle Rittenhouse um, playing over the the text that said white supremacist or I don't know. Uh, his voiceover. I don't know if it, it call that um, if he if he would call him that directly. Uh, I think um, I don't know <laughs> which. Well, well I, I would I would have to see. I don't really yeah. pay attention to Joe Biden's campaign ads or nothing. Uh, if if we're just if he's talking about like white supremacy and you throw Rittenhouse up there, I think that's fine. I think Rittenhouse, with the very least, motivated by white supremacy. Um, at least indirectly, um, but with um, with regards to uh, why people think he killed black people, I don't, at least I don't remember any media institutions, any major ones, you know, like CNN, saying Rittenhouse killed black people. I think people just kind of inferred that because it was a Black Lives Matter protest. Like, you know, you know Rittenhouse is white, and you know he's gone over to BLM, and you know he killed people, so maybe people just put, you know, two and two together, I think. Um, if there are, if there are any um, institutions that said he killed black folk, I mean they were wrong. I don't know if that would count towards slander though necessarily. But like to like what what would you think should be legislated here, right? I mean, you, would you really like want Rittenhouse to be able to sue Joe Biden for throwing Rittenhouse's face up while talking about yeah, white supremacy? I, I honestly think he should, and I think he should win. Um, Why? Because while he may not have specifically said Kyle Rittenhouse is a white supremacist. Uh, the the inference is definitely. I mean, I've seen the video. I, I mean, I don't know if you had, but this was his campaign ad right before winning. He said something about Donald Trump uh, allowing white supremacists. And while he's saying this, Kyle, Kyle Rittenhouse, I believe, is the first picture or video to play over that. And so now the inference is that this kid is a white supremacist or that he's some terrorist or something. Well, sure. Well, you can say he's aligned with white supremacy. I'm fine with saying that. But how do we know that? You can't. It's inference. There's no way to prove whether or not it's true outside a direct confession. Those can be okay. Compelling. So then, why are we why are we telling people that as someone who's running for president and allowing people to walk around thinking that this kid is, like how is that morally how is that responsible like how how can you be you're someone with a platform you're someone running for the the uh, the Oval Office and uh, you are you are putting this idea in people's head that this kid is a terrorist or white supremacist and then he, and then of course he gets found non guilty on all charges. 
and that he didn't break any laws, and we don't know what's inside his head. Well, that doesn't have anything uh, to do with the claim that he might be aligned with white supremacy, right? I mean, I mean he, his legality might be, is... He might be, but his life is completely ruined, and it's it's definitely been ruined more so by this this labeling that's gone on. Okay. Well, I, I mean, don't... We can say, we can say, I mean, I, we can say that he was probably reckless to show up and that maybe his parents should have done something about it, but, I mean, in the end, that is... His life is literally ruined. I mean, he's going to have to have 24-7 security. He's gotten... A hundred oh. death threats. He's gonna he's gonna be living on a cushion of Republican support for the rest of his life. He's probably gonna be a politician in twenty years. So I I don't know if I'd well, say his life is ruined. I would say there's been a significant disruption to his life. That's pretty clear, I think. But with regards to like the claim here, I don't even see how it's wrong. Like the problem is with claims like, oh, you're aligned with white supremacy, you're this, you're that. I mean, these are all inferences. They're subjective statements made after looking at a person's behavior and trying to put them together into a kind of pattern. But if you make claims like that vulnerable to uh, land, uh, uh, slander and libel cases, I mean, you could you could like freeze essentially all discussion. Like, you, like this would not just be to Rittenhouse. You realize this would implicate every politician who's ever run an attack ad, right? Every single one of them. Right. I this mean, would get yeah. the whole Republican Party. This would get anyone online who's ever made any statement about the character of a politician. Like, this would, the standard being set here would implicate everyone. So I don't think it's a good one. I mean, we might as well just fork our money over to the lawyers now. Yeah. I mean, I, I suppose, I, 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 I get that take. I think that's a reasonable, I think it's a reasonable belief because it's, there's definitely a line, though. Like, I, I don't know where it is, but there's got to be, there has to be an objective. I think there's got to be an objective definition of these things. And I mean, there's, there's got to be, or at least a tolerance. Like, if I think that if we're going to allow that and we're going to say anyone can call anyone else some horrible name and accuse them of racism or any of this, then at some point the society has to be okay and say, oh, well, maybe they're not. But that's not, we all, we all see someone that we've been told our whole lives is a racist and what's going to go through our heads. Well, that's the free marketplace. Is it? It? I mean, the discourse, like if you if you're being called a racist, you can fight against that by pointing out that you're not. You can make arguments for and against it. I mean, that's kind of the whole I, so, I mean, there are bad parts to freedom of speech. Don't get me wrong, but this just seems to be part of it. You know, you defend yourself against accusations. We reserve libel and slander for instances of provable harm associated with knowing misinformation against public figures. If you can prove that somebody knows they're lying, like if you got a clip of Biden saying, yeah, I know he's not aligned with white supremacy or shit like that, then then go for it, right? Like, I, I think that knowing dishonesty should be punished, if nothing else. But beyond that, I feel like there's no standard you could set, like a way to lower that line without, like, cutting into a bunch of protected behavior. So do you, I mean, would you agree that when people kind of get this um, mark on their lives, whether it's whether it's legitimate or not, that can prevent them from being hired in the in the future or or being accepted to certain schools yeah or but being successful in the, in the future ain't that just having a reputation i mean that could be the case because you shit your pants at a denny's uh, yeah, but that's something you that's something you did but it, i could so you're telling me i could ruin anyone's reputation right now by calling them a name and, and putting it all over the internet I, I could ruin their reputation if they're I, a public figure yeah silly. if you're if they're a public figure and it can't be proved that you're doing so like uh with knowing dishonesty, you know, like if, if you're alluding to something that actually has happened, um, then yeah, you can do that. All right. Well, uh, I don't I know. Mean, you, but I, you got to know there. Are, I think it's pretty right. But you got to know there'd be like great harm to having the state crack down on that, right? I mean, imagine people throwing no, lawsuits that, around yeah. like for people calling other people racist and then they're in court like burning thousands of dollars in lawyer fees every month. Like, well, can you prove I'm racist? And of course you can't ever prove a person's racist so you're, you have mm -hmm. people like bringing up tweets to substantiate the legitimacy of their claim like like all you know what i mean like you know you know uh i had point you to uh uh you know witness here who says that this guy said thugs when talking about black people like i, I would just it would get so granular you know yeah i mean i definitely yeah i definitely see that um becoming a problem i, th I think it is complex and i would have to i would have to um really decide what i want to to be illegal, I guess. Um, <laughs> I just want to anyway, say, I recognize yeah. what you're saying, though. I just want to be clear. Yeah. This is something I've bemoaned as well. There are consequences to the United States, like uniquely lax, or sorry, uniquely strict laws uh, concerning libel and defamation suits. Um, and they can have like real 
like bad consequences sometimes. Like for instance, like Alex Jones, you know, um, he recently lost on four counts with the um, the Sandy Hook case shit because his lawyers never provided docs to the court. But Alex Jones, I mean, I would be okay with him losing a lawsuit every day of his life for how much misinformation he spreads. But most of it is protected under the First Amendment. So, you know. All right, well, I saw, let's, let's I guess, shift a little bit here. But um, mm -hmm. I saw a clip of you, and I, th I think you were discussing Rittenhouse. I don't know for sure. I just saw a brief clip, and you had said something along the lines of, you have seen 20 Marvel movies where when the hero is surrounded, they, they put their weapons down and put their hands up. That was a troll, right? That yeah. Be a troll. Yeah. A little okay. after that clip, you yeah. even hear me say quietly, I was trying to lighten the mood because the person I was arguing oh, okay. with didn't seem to get it. But no, the, so Tim Poole in a conversation with Sam Cedar, do you know Tim Poole and Sam Cedar? Yeah. 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 In a conversation, uh, they were talking about like utilitarianism and Tim Poole brought up like Thanos' ideology or something. So I thought it'd be funny, like, all right, well, now I'll, I'll, I'll see if this argument works, you know. But yeah, I, I mean, not to insult you, but I just didn't know, you know, to, whether to believe that or not. You no, know, not but... at all, not at all. Without okay. further context, no, I wouldn't expect anyone to be charitable towards me on that. All right, well, that's good. Um, I mean, it's your. I also want to give you kind of a chance here. Um, it's your stream. I don't know what you've talked about. Is there anything that's interesting you specifically right now? Um, maybe having to do with written house or something else lately. Well. I don't know what you've talked about. And I don't want to, you know, I talk about BLM on here all the time and it's just kind of boring. So it's like, you know. <laughs> no, with, well, with regards to the Rittenhouse stuff, I wasn't that interested in the legal outcome of the trial because like whether or not he goes free himself is, well, it's, it's relevant mostly in, in its cultural consequences, not so much like him specifically. I, I, I just didn't care that much with him. But with regards to the future of protesting, I guess right now, I'd, I'd really like to push responsible protesting for him, you know? Like, if you're a right-winger, and you think your city is about to be burnt to the ground by BLM, Antifa, Democrat, whatever the fuck, you know, and I contest those assessments, but if you think that, uh, the best thing you can do, and this is provable, by the way, this ain't just me trying to cuck you, the best thing that you can do <laughs> is show up to these communities uh, in large groups of people uh, with minimal weapon carrying and bring with you medical equipment, fire extinguishers, water, uh, wood boards, that kind of stuff, you know? Um, and go from area to area. If there's something you want to protect, keep to the group. If there's an, a, a people you need to see or check up on, move with the group. And to do so, you will do so much more good for the community. And if right-wingers were doing that, like that's how they're owning the BLMers, then fuck yes, okay? Go own the Dems. Go into those majority black communities that are being torn up by BLM rioters and show them how cool you guys are with your with your city rebuilding. Just something like that, you know? Because that is good form for that kind of behavior. And likewise, if you're protesting, you know, left, right, whatever... You don't want to bring a gun. You don't want to open carry uh, because these tend to incite violence. They increase the threat of aggression on both sides. What you want to do is you want to stick with the group. You want to read the signs around you to make sure to avoid potential threats or clashes with police or counter protesters. I just I want people to engage in behavior that minimizes harm. We'll all live longer if we do that. So we, we have a mutual interest, I think. So do you think... Um... Do you think the Kyle Rittenhouse case has deterred uh, future acts of looting, violence, stuff like that? Like, do you think people will stay away from, are more likely to stay away from these things now? No, nah, I think it'll deter protesters. Uh, the people who do that looting, violence, rioting shit, they're the rowdy boys, you know? They're not going to be stopped by no goddamn knowledge of a court precedent. But the people who actually pay attention to these proceedings, the people who are most fearful of harm and danger, those usually aren't the ones out there looting and rioting. They're usually the ones who would have attended peacefully. And they're probably going to be a little more concerned that somebody's going to come up and Kenosha them. Because, they, because again, we don't have great media comprehension here. I think a lot of people do believe Rittenhouse just, like, wandered into a group of innocent BLM protesters and started like mowing down the crowd or whatever. Of course, that's mm -hmm. not what happened. And I think maybe there is some blame that could be levied to the media for, for the message being diluted somewhat, but people are going to be deterred from protesting for a bit. Um, so that's unfortunate. I hope we can do something about that. Sorry. Okay. So hold on. Not at all. Uh, I, I had a different question in mind earlier, but but yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think it's, a, I think it's a fair analysis. And I think, um, I mean, I, I kind of do want to see 
I guess I'm excited to say I don't I don't want Kyle to become like a a and a, a CPAC speaker for the rest of his life or a, someone who speaks at RNC like the Covington kid, um, but I don't know I, w- I would like to see something that is that is uh, beneficial to people as a whole. But um, as far as I guess free speech goes, we'll kind of shift back to this. Mm-hmm. What do you think about um, platforming certain individuals, like giving certain people a, a platform? Do you think that everyone should should have a voice i think it depends on the context of the platforming there are a lot of people on the left who dislike me because they think i give a voice to right wingers by having them on my show and it's true i mean i've talked to you know some tim pool twice charlie kirk uh i've definitely talked to some larger figures on the right but my argument in instances like these is that my platforming is responsible because i speak with them with the specific intention of moving their audience to the left and i'm confident in my ability to at least you know come off looking okay uh not always but most of the time um there are some people on the left who think there's just a categorically it's just a bad thing no matter what but i disagree with regards to responsible platforming though i think you more mean like uh social media platforms you know should people have accounts um, and to that, my answer is, and I go, I go really back and forth on this. I, I want to be hyperbolic and say, fuck no. But in reality, I think that there's a horrible, difficult balance between preserving the right to the, the public commons and establishing rules that discourage or outright, outright prohibit like really bad behavior. And I think that websites benefit from having terms of service that explicitly prohibit like bigotry. So that's that is a slippery slope because like bigotry right i've said the n-word on my youtube channel hard r i don't want my channel deleted i would go yeah i would prefer it actually stay up you know (laughs) uh but uh you you know i maybe there's another person who's never said the n-word uh but their channel is all about promoting race realism you know should youtube nuke that yeah sure i don't fucking care well um what, uh, race realists is that people who i mean i've got i've had atheism is unstoppable and i, I think he calls himself a race realist. do you know who that is yeah he is yeah he's uh he's uh with respect a uh, psychopath um but yes he's been in my uh in my in my comments a few times you, and you've had stefan molyneux on as well who's stefan one of the molyneux, yeah. yeah preeminent uh race realist okay so what do you i guess do you not do you not like devin tracy or atheism is unstoppable like I, I think I think cool, he, I, honestly. I think he's absolutely insane. I, that would be my first prescription. Like leave politics aside, I think he's insane. Uh, but I guess if I were to move past that, um, I think I've honestly forgotten most of what he believes outside of the insanity. I would actually have to go like reevaluate. You know, um, I it's pr- probably pretty bad. <laughs> it's pretty, probably pretty okay. bad stuff. Yeah. What is the, what are the um, I guess because you said you mentioned Tim Pool, Charlie Kirk. What are the more? I guess who is the most right wing person you've talked to? Have you talked to someone like? um fuentes or or spencer or uh spencer wait did spencer want to come on or am i thinking of another person i um i i never talked to spencer fuentes is a pussy um he has he ducked me for two consecutive years uh because he didn't want to debate me without a moderator and i'm getting really bored and now i'm on youtube and he's off everything so i'm rapidly losing interest with that you don't you don't have a moderator debate Oh no no he's he's moderators give an unjustified level of professionalism to conversations with people like him. He doesn't actually care about any of the relevant info which is blood sports. Why have a moderator for blood sports? He's going to come on and call me fat. I mean what what do I want a moderator there to go like no <laughs> Like, it's just what, what it's yeah, not yeah. yeah he's he's worried about me muting him i have muted like people three times i don't i don't care what it is. but I, i've talked to stefan molyneux he's pretty far right i he's basically a nazi um i've talked to a decent number of smaller nazi channels i've definitely you know you know cavorted around with the far right a good number of times mm-hmm. though it's it's less so now the alt-right's kind of dying a little bit now it's more like the QAnon, like evangelical christian crowd and I try to keep my thoughts where they're relevant. So I'm hoping to get debates with them in the future. Okay. I mean, I, I do want to see a debate between you and Nick. I don't really follow Nick. I did watch a couple of his streams. Um, he is entertaining and good on camera, but I, I mean, I've invited him on this show. He ignores me. He knows who I am because a couple of super chatters mentioned me. Um, but he is, um, he is someone who strikes me as every time I hear about like a someone's public interaction with him, it sounds like he's pretty socially awkward. 
Yeah, that so, wouldn't surprise me. And, I think um, I, I look. I mean, look with with respect. Fuentes is never going to be moved over because he makes money from the show. A lot of money. I saw that big Bitcoin transfer. Whew. Uh, he 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 gets banked from this. But most of the people who follow Fuentes, because I've talked to his fans, you know, they call themselves Gorpers, are deeply emotionally immature people. And I don't mean that in some kind of patronizing generic insult way. I mean that literally, like. They, there's there's an element of their personal identity that they're either uncomfortable with or haven't fully adopted, and they're looking for a kind of group identity to attach themselves to. I believe a person should be fully self-actualized, but that is in contrast with this like racial or national obsession that a lot of the far right likes to engage in. And so often it's like this fear thing too, right? Like it, it's the reason why there's so much interracial porn on 4chan right next to all the racists. It's like, you know, or, 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 you know, I could talk for an hour. I'll just say this, okay? One of the most common things that happened to escaped slaves back in the, you know, slave days was they'd be caught, they'd be hanged, of course, but they would be castrated, too. And, uh, you know, you, you'd think if we're racist, you wouldn't want to get your hands all over black dick, but it was very pervasive back then, the idea that the, the almost animalistically powerful sexuality of black men would, you know, they'd have sex with white women and white women would like it more. I mean, that's like a hundreds and hundreds of year old trope. That trope, the most racist people are the ones most obsessed with black men's virility. It's really weird. It's very clearly like some kind of insecurity thing. So I guess, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I guess, I guess I, I'm hoping that for a lot of the young people in the alt-right, there's just kind of like an emotional breakthrough they can make, and then they'll be maybe a little better. Not a leftist, but, you know, a little better. So I do have a lot of, a, a good amount of my followers do consider themselves groypers. I've definitely heard this term a lot. Um... Do you, I mean, so, so what you think that they're kind of, what, what was it you were saying that they didn't, something about self-actualization or something? Well, I, there's, there are a lot of sociological things tying into this. I, I, I think basically they are extremely disillusioned with the world, which, hey, buddy, people are on the left too. Um, they're extremely disillusioned with the world and they've adopted a kind of, uh, a, an almost empirical nihilism where they no longer really believe in the value of facts or of, or of information or, or even like reason conceptually. Uh, and instead to them, it's just this void power game that they play into with deliberate, uh, like detached cynicism. So, cause when you argue with them online, they don't really argue with you. They just kind of banty about, they'll insult you, they'll play, they'll say things they don't even believe. Uh, they're, they're, they're full Joker mode, and they take pride in that. That's why, even though the Joker was a great movie for everyone, there is an obsession with the Joker moniker, the aesthetic on the far right. It's that Pagliacci shit, you know, be a clown while the world is burning. But it's really not, you know. There are things we can do to improve the world, and I swear to God, 98% of the shit that I believe in would objectively improve their lives. What, they, what they, they don't want more economic equality they don't want like people to have higher standards of living it's 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 uh, so there are things that you can do ultimately when you def when you leave all analysis at the door and you rely purely on these nihilistic power games you you remove your, of yourself the ability to make meaningful change and give yourself in the hands of demagogue demagogues grifters of 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 strong men and you leave everything up to them. And that's what's happened with fascist movements the world round. People get angry, disillusioned, and they trust everything to a person who briefly abates their nihilism by achieving the power that they think will be used to make things better. But it never does, ever. It has never succeeded. So clearly that's not an effective strategy for making the world better. So, I mean, I don't know much about, like, I guess what, what goes what these people do i mean i i do agree like they uh they tend to be like more joking online trolling um they're always anonymous for the most part but i mean i don't i don't take issue with that like i mean i'm not i haven't experienced any bad interaction with them of course because they do like uh the guests i've had but i mean i don't really see an issue with being anonymous online uh, trolling. Of course, I think a lot of them uh, yeah, joke about saying the N word and stuff, I mean, which I, I mean, I have too, but I mean, it's like, that's not, they, they joke about like racist things while they're not actually that way. Um, when you actually talk to a couple of them, I have before, but I mean, I don't see an issue with that. Like I actually kind of like that sort of internet interaction, especially if you're going to be anonymous and you're just going to be on the internet for fun. 
Well, it depends on what you're doing, right? I don't have an issue with anonymity. That's the way our internet is. I mean, yeah. it has upsides and downsides, I guess, but I'm not challenging that, really. And I right. don't have an issue with irony or trolling, I guess. It's just, what, like, what are you doing it for? The whole, like, well, are you racist, aren't you thing. I mean, I've seen the game play out a bunch of times. You know, I'm certainly not a stranger to it. And, like, I don't really believe in the ironic detached racism. That was kind of like a myth for a while, especially on 4chan. Like, oh, we say the N-word all the time, constantly repeat racist jokes to each other, but we're not actually, like, racist. And then, like, yeah, they were. <laughs> Poll was formed to contain them. They clearly are. They, ob they did obviously all believe that. The problem is, is that they don't really believe anything that much. So what they believe, at least what they say they believe, kind of is rooted in what's most convenient to them at the moment, you know? If you're talking with them, like, are you actually racist? Like, Maybe in that moment, they genuinely think that they're not, but that's empirical nihilism, right? It's a consequence of anonymity and of trolling. What do you actually believe? Who knows? What day is it? What moon cycle is it? None of it matters anymore. But this isn't how you build political power. Ironic detachment is the opposite. It's how you ennoble people to political power. You throw your power behind others, but you don't speak it yourself. You're just blindly following trends and movements. Um, we... It's, it's, it's just, I don't know. I just don't think it's a very effective way of achieving positive social change. But that's the convo I want to have with these types, right? Like, well, what positive social changes do you want to make? Usually they sputter. If they actually have anything to say, it's some vague Western civilization immigration birth rate shit, which is easy to pull apart. But five minutes into that argument, they stop talking about the stats anymore. They just start trolling again. I've had that happen so many times. You try to have a real convo, and when they realize, like, oh, shit, wait, hold on. Pe people people, do research into this? Then they go right back to, the, like, uh, you know, the, the Groyper memeing. So I think that's a bit sad, personally. I, I don't know. I think, um, I don't know about their, their effectiveness. I think that, I do think that uh, Fuentes is, I mean, like you said, he's he's making a lot of money doing what he's doing. I don't know how actually effective he's doing. I don't like his, um... He he would stick to this like trust the plan thing like we're like if you're a viewer and you're trying to understand the person you're watching like wouldn't you want to know like what the plan is or you Nick Fuentes's plan is to make a lot of money off his audience everything is secondary to that so you think you think he's a grifter I th I don't think there's anything but grifters in that same with Molyneux he I mean the dude literally led a cult before he he had a cult where like tier three subs got to like meet him in person yeah I, I think he, I know where his priorities lie he's always bitching about his lower sub and donation count and his a uh, bit shoot now that he's banned off everything else. I think, um, uh, but I don't think there can really be anything else. I mean, that's kind of the leader you deserve when like all you know is epic trolling and N-word jokes, right? Like, you know, I'm not saying everyone has to be like a political philosopher or anything, but even underneath yeah. like all the lefty trolling, and there are plenty of lefty trolls, there's usually kind of like a, a general grounding political ideology mm -hmm. that they can rely on and you can defer to that like underneath the jokes well what do you think we should have what do you think we should do but if there's nothing beneath that i mean you're a pay pig your leaders make money off of you they'll tell you whatever they need to maybe one day you'll get a fascist revolution and if you do it probably won't make your life any better have fun it's just like well fuck that's that's a no wonder they're sad you know so do would you say i guess the difference between you and um I mean, do you, because I guess people who do this do make money. I, what is the difference between, I guess, you and some of these? Is it because you're cl more clear about your goals or? Yeah, well, I, I'm not to say I'm perfect. Obviously, I like making money too. I, uh, I wouldn't fault anyone right. for making money off their, um, the content they produce. But I, the, the goals that I have are specific and deliberate. I have a, you know, a philosophical perspective that I can relate my political beliefs to, and I'm forthcoming when asked about them. But I don't have to rely on this, what did Fuentes call it, his tactical language, you know, like, where he wants to say something, but he means the other thing, and then he's like, because he, he doesn't believe the Holocaust, or at least he doesn't believe the narrative, like, clearly. But, you know, he'll, he'll, oh, well, I was joking. Like, I think that's bullshit. It's cuck behavior, too, you know. Um, to, to, in, to, to run away from the things that you believe in. Even if it gets you axed off social media, I mean, it's always this, like, how can you trust a person you're getting political info from if they've admitted that uh, they're, they're willing to lie uh, for, for, like, the, the expediency of keeping their 
Google AdSense account up? I mean, how do you even build anything off of that? What does it even mean? And say he believed everything intently. Like, again, what are we building towards exactly? I've seen Nick Fuentes' show. Immigration this, immigration that. Immigration makes our country better. All stats and data prove it. Uh, but when you say that to them, they'll go, ah, stats and data, and they'll post like a Jewish caricature <laughs> or something. They No, they will, because they don't care. <laughs> That's the, pretty funny, though. But, but, but would you want your country led by people like that? I don't know. I don't. Here's. I don't really trust anyone. Uh, to be. To be. Uh, to be honest. Is do you think like, that's guess... comparable though to like economists, like people who are like, uh, you know, I have no beliefs or plans outside of being anti-Semitic. Like, like I feel like that's probably not a very functioning society. I mean, maybe not. I mean, I haven't. I haven't seen. Like I said, I don't. I don't know about their effectiveness, or I haven't seen really any make it into the government or or necessarily be successful with their goals, but... We have Nazi Germany, don't we? They lost in just about every way. Their uh, internal... I don't, think, I don't think Nazi Germany began with, like, uh, the same thing, though. Like, even, let, let's say... Because, I mean, I don't know what these people believe, but mm -hmm. if they... Let's say they are Holocaust deniers. Like, I don't... I don't really know that for sure, and I don't know that... I mean, I, I know there are definitely a lot of jokes around Holocaust... Uh, the Holocaust and, and oh, they Jewish find it people very and funny, Blacks yeah. and stuff. Right, but, but, but I don't think that... That's a bit telling, isn't it? I mean, that all their humor is like, haha, we're ironically Nazis, and then they never do anything else. Like, that's a bit <laughs> telling, right? I mean, again, I yeah. don't hide behind jokes. Do I make jokes about the wealthy people or cops? Yes, but I'm a leftist. I'm clear. I'm a communist. I'm clear about this. I don't, if, if people heard my jokes and they're like, well, that sounded kind of commie to me. Like, I wouldn't run from that. Like, yeah, I'm a communist. It influences my humor. But they're always running from it. They hide, you know, oh, we're, not Nazis, we just enjoy the iconography, uh, the political positions, and we make jokes that would have been basically the jokes they would have told to each other, albeit in German, 80 years ago. It's, you know, it's like, okay, all right, well, cool. Well, I think I think that at the same time, like, if you're a person who finds it, like, which I do find funny sometimes, especially the reaction it gets, like, I mean, and that's all what comedy is, is really saying things that are taboo and different and things that, that are technically not safe. No, but it's, um, well, I guess it's not all comedy is, but it's a large part of it. I mean, Dave, Sh Dave Chappelle, uh, he relies on that heavily, especially lately. Yeah, but he actually um, makes jokes. I've been in the Paul Fuentes forums. They're not really jokes. Well, uh, Dave Chappelle is, is, a, is, a, is a comedy man. You know, I mean, he actually, regardless of the political positions being expressed, he puts some weight into the, you know, the, the planning, the setup, the delivery. But I've been in these communities. They're not making jokes they're just saying the thing and they find it funny like it's not a joke to say like jews are greedy blum blah schmeckles like that's not well right right okay you've maybe seen it a few thousand times less than i have but the thing is right there's not really Probably. a joke there i mean in terms of comedic value i might as well just say like poo really loud i guess but like that's over pretty funny and over. too right not as funny but pretty seeing funny. it thousands of times i mean like because again i've seen the the threads they're not jokes these are just the things they believe and they're cowards so they express it through comedy also a lot of them are like 13 so you know that's uh, that might be true that might be true i mean i've i mean i've i've even interacted with people who who support fuentes or like him or or, or enjoy watching him but will specifically say they're not a groper and they, they don't like groupers um i don't know i, I guess is there some sort of initiation, or is it just a fan of Fuentes as a groper? I I don't know. You can like self-identify. Sort of I'm sure I'm sure there are people who aren't Nazis or who aren't even conservative who watch Fuentes because they're for the same reason people watch Serbian beheading videos. I mean, it, you know, people just enjoy uh, enjoy a lot of types of content. But when yeah. we're talking about political advocacy, I think we have a moral responsibility to advocate for things that are good. You know, and if if like we're talking about, like let's let's talk communities, right? Like, well, here's a community where they don't seem to believe in data as a concept and the most common talking points in them are just them being nazis but they laugh at it is this a community from which i will get good political takes and if you're a nazi the answer is yes right but at least we have to be forthcoming about that um that that it's not just ironic detachment that these are the things they believe and then we can tear those issues apart because having argued with them they tend to have pretty bad arguments like the immigration thing for example like Lord knows how much chat. How many immigration arguments have I had? Dozens, at least, at this point, and not a single point conceded. It's laughably easy. It just benefits us, like across the board. You can talk about integration or interracial marriage or any of that bullshit. Race realism. It all falls apart for them, and then it goes right back to the jokes because they don't 
really care. It's just the game. Well, do you, I do have a question on that. Do you think that during a pandemic or a, or a time which is arguably pretty divisive or, or I guess during the 2020 riots, do you think that we should be welcoming Im- immigrants during that time? Because I know some people just want a brief uh, pause and maybe, maybe their motivation is to continue it forever in the end. But do you think it would be reasonable to, to temporarily close our borders? No, why? I mean, if, I mean, I think, I feel like if it's a, if there's like a deadly pandemic going on and we're, we're having domestic problems in terms of violence and rioting, like we were in 2020, I, I don't see how it's necessarily the safest thing or the smartest thing to allow people to pour in. Well, I don't think that, um, um, I don't think that the existence of immigration contributes to civil unrest, um, at least not with BLM type stuff. Maybe like there's economic agitation exacerbated by right pundits, but not with the BLM type stuff. With regards to the pandemic, I mean, the process of immigration legally, where we let in about a million people a year, uh, that I think is unaffected by the pandemic in large part because the process takes so damn long that getting COVID checks and the people who come in is laughably easy compared to everything else. I mean, compared to the shit immigrants have to do to get into this country legally, getting like the whole COVID thing sorted, making sure they're quarantined and safe, that's like a a, almost an insignificantly easy thing to take care of. With regards to the illegal immigration, there's been some data on COVID transmission with undocumented immigrants, but I don't think I've seen any results to suggest it's been anything above negligible. By far, the most we could do to help with that would be, you know, telling uh, the Republicans to get everyone to get vaccinated and wear masks. Like, that would be exponentially more effective um, than than anything else. But a lot of the people calling for an end to the immigration were anti-mask. So I don't know if the COVID safety thing is a is a, a route they can really take, you know? So you you are, you call yourself a libertarian, right? Yeah, libertarian socialist. Okay. Do you believe in uh, vaccination mandates? Yes. You do? Yeah. Okay. So why? why I, think, do you believe in that? I think that during a pandemic, and the definition there for what a pandemic is, I mean, of course, varies a bit, but generally during a pandemic, um, not getting vaccinated is essentially an act of aggression upon others. You're compromising others' right to safety uh, by, uh, by uh, uh, allowing yourself to be a vector for the disease. Um, because the only way to really get rid of the pandemic is for everyone to be, you know, situated. If there are people not complying with that, you're threatening everyone's well-being. So I would say it's an acceptable deference to the public good. Same as taxes. So why, so do you, do you blame people for being skeptic over getting it or, or being, I guess, uh, suspicious of the vaccine? Um, I guess I mostly blame all Especially younger people, sorry. Especially younger people. Yeah, yeah. I mostly blame the people in media who have lied to them. I, I mean, I can't, if they're, you know, watching a bunch of Fox News, I mean, good Lord, like, what, what would you expect, right? Um, I, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm still going to hold it against them because we're all responsible for our own behavior at the end of the day. But in terms of like socially, where am I, where is my aggression levied? It would, it would be mostly towards the, um, the you know, the, the liars in mainstream media, the Fox News, you know, the uh, bunch of independent media sources, Joe Rogan, shit like that. Um, what do you think it will, do you think it will go on forever? Do you think this vaccination will, cause I mean, like in New York, I think they have rules where you can, you can get the vaccine or you can, if you have what they call it as a legit or a, um, a strong religious belief, you can, you can bring a test to these places and get in if it was within a certain amount of time. Like if it's the PCR test, I think you, it's like a 72 hour rule. Um, mm-hmm. and you can still get in, but do you think those rules are still going to apply for a long time? Cause I, I, I heard there was like a Pfizer treatment pill coming out did you hear about that no i haven't heard about that i i I don't know if that was legitimate um i heard there was a pfizer pill coming out to treat covid and if that happens i feel like the vaccine mandates and the strictness around it would go away possibly if that's true if if that happens they can't be managed forever though keep in mind we've kept vaccine mandates for for like a century right with like polio and the mumps and measles the thing is with covid is what we're really worried about is another strain you know so with stuff like polio, it's pretty much under lock and key. The only way people get polio, at least in America these days, is well, you have to try, and you have to break a few laws to do it. I think. I mean, you gotta you gotta go pretty wild. Uh, but with COVID, I mean, you know, millions and millions of people have it. If new strains develop, it's possible our vaccines grow less effective, as they have already. The Delta variant uh, took you know went went right through the um, 
the the initial vaccine wave. So you're uh, now fairly likely to get it, but you don't go to the hospital over it, which is still an improvement. I think really the only thing that we can really do to secure our future safety is a total elimination of the virus. Whether that means an extremely strict period of vaccine mandates and lockdowns, whether that means some brilliant ingenuity on the part of our pharmaceutical companies, workers, something like that. But we need it to stop because otherwise new strains will develop and we'll be in the situation again. I don't, I don't really... I don't really blame people for being skeptic, especially if there were studies coming out suggesting that young, younger people were would be fine, or at least at least the um. And, and I get it, I get the the whole like, oh, you're spreading it and all this stuff. But I mean, there was 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 there not a study saying that young people were were more safe without the vaccine than with it, even if they hadn't gotten COVID yet or didn't have the antibodies? I don't believe I've seen that. Um, it's possible that if something like that produced, I missed it. I know that there have been studies saying that natural immunity uh, outpaces vaccine immunity, but even in those tests, they said you should just get both. I guess I just don't understand what the, um, like, it's just a little vaccine, right? I mean, I had it done. I'm not a big fan of needles, but I, I, it, it just, it feels like a lot of people, they need this really high, like, burden of proof for the vaccine beyond the safety test is already undergone. Yeah, I think, I think people want to, want to trust what they're putting in them. And I, I think, I think there's also a principal thing here. Like if you are initially were thinking about getting it, maybe you wanted to wait some time to see what was happening because I mean, there, let's face it. When it first came out, there were a lot of people who said, I'm probably not going to get it, or at least I'm going to wait. And they have now. Um, right. For FDA approval, the, the full right, approval. Stuff, right. Well, stuff like that. So to, I, th I think to not allow them to make a decision and I, and I get it people in the media lie and there's a lot of this stuff going on, but I think that if, if it, if we can't give people a choice over a vaccine, um, what can we give people that, like, don't you think there's so much more that we could, we could force people into? Um, possibly, but vaccines are special because of the nature of pandemics. I just don't understand what people's aversions to it really are. I mean, you have people like, uh, you know, you're getting your ivermectin. People are, I don't know, shoving bleach up their ass. I mean, it's what, like, what's, what's the issue with the vaccine? I know there's a bunch of conspiracy Bill Gates microchip bullshit, but we can't entertain all of the flat earthers forever. I mean, I just, I, I guess I don't understand what the issue is. You get it. You get a little shot. The likelihood of being hurt by the vaccine is lower than the likelihood of being hurt by the virus at any age or level of previous infection. So there's no instance unless there's some specific condition you have, and I don't know the details for every condition on Earth, but there would have to be some really specific exception for not taking the vaccine to be the best option for a person, like really specific, like not just one in a hundred, probably quite a bit lower than that. So, but the fears that people have, I mean, People have a right to be fearful, I suppose. Uh, these are fearful times, but they need to be justified fears. And the misinfo about the vaccine has been insane. Uh, at first, you know, it was a general thing. Um, but right now, far more people are dying in red counties than blue. That's no coincidence. That's just Republicans are dying more because they believe less in the efficacy of the vaccine. It's sad. It's unnecessary. They're dying out of faith. Uh, uh, and, and, and there, it, the faith they have is in something that's empirically disprovable. Um, I guess why, do, if, if people aren't worried about it or they have, they have reason to believe that they're fine. Like, I, I guess my thing is that I, what I have seen is that there is definitely reason to be, to be at least concerned or at least to want to wait. I mean, isn't this like one of the, if not the quickest vaccines that was created? And they have had problems with it, with a couple uh, versions of it. Um, so I, I, I definitely think that we can't. Oh, what's the issue with uh, the vaccine? It passed the FDA tests. It's, um, I don't think it's the fastest ever, but using the mRNA technology, it's, um, which, which has been around for decades, mind, but the technology we're using, I mean, the speed with which it came out is, is spectacular. It used to take, you know, what, five, six, eight years sometimes for a vaccine to be approved, for it to go through all these processes. But the processes you go through with the mRNA vaccine allow you to get this done in less than a year, which is, I mean, we should be thankful for that um, medical, uh, you know. I guess what I'm wondering is, like, underlying this, what is the concern? Do you think they're lying and, like, we'll all grow a third arm or? 
I think people definitely have reason to believe that they're being lied to by by people above them, regardless right. of their regardless of regardless of you know which political beliefs they have or whether they're pro or anti vax or whether they're pro or anti vaccine coercion. Sure, but the vaccine you know, like, specifically, like what benefit would there be socially in not curing it? I think that if we had the same the same situation we're in now, and this was 20 years ago, and let's say the vaccine, let, let's go with let's go with the vaccine being effective and not being a problem, and it's not, uh, it is way better for you to get it than not. And we had this 20 years ago, I think a lot more people would get it. But I don't think like the right wing or or people who are skeptic now are to blame for that. And I don't think it's fair to say people who haven't been vaxxed or anti-vaxxers or to to make them outcasts, you know, or to ostracize them. Well, well, okay, but I mean, you have to have a good reason for your, you know, decision to contribute to the plague, don't you? I, I just like, what is the... Cont what? Well, 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 that's what contribute you're Contribute to the plague? What do you mean? The fewer people are vaccinated, the more the disease cycles, the more likely it is to form another mutation and continue to get worse, thus superseding the vaccination of the people who have taken the vaccine. Right. I mean, that's okay. you're, that's what you're doing, right? Like, that's that's what happened to the Delta variant. We thought we'd be done with COVID by now, but COVID kept cycling and cycling and cycling, and we got the Delta variant. And the Delta variant cut through the first round of vaccines. Now, it's still safer to take them. It just, uh, it, it significantly reduces the likelihood of death and hospitalization. But it does now mean that I am less safe, my vaccinated self, because unvaccinated people continued to get the virus and it replicated in them. What if they? Nope. What if they don't care? Though is my point. What if they? Or, or maybe they do want it. Maybe they do want to get it. I mean, there are people who wanted to get it and be over with it that way. Uh, I mean, they're legally free to, but I don't think you can uh, have uh, much of a moral qualm against people socially ostracizing them if they're like, "Yeah, we don't care about your safety. We're just going to get this because we well, no, errantly but... distrust the vaccine for no evident reason." I mean, well, sure, I'll ostracize. There are definitely people. reasons to distrust it, whether whether they're legitimate or not. There are definitely reasons. Well, I would need a legitimate reason, right? I mean, there are always reasons. You could say like, "Well, well aliens I, made it." I don't think we can get. I don't. I don't think we can. Uh, we can determine whether a reason is legit. Like, I don't. If if a if people are worried about death or people are worried about heart problems, then that's, I mean, if you're a libertarian, I feel like you would have to say then, then it has to be completely their choice to, on whether they want to have the vaccine or not. No, they're harming other people. They're violating the NAP. The pandemic cannot end until it is no longer potential or the potential no longer exists for it to cycle and replicate and possibly mutate. That's the only way this ends. So we, it's, it's really not a personal choice anymore. I don't know if I don't know if that if it really violates the NAP as much as forcing someone to make a medical choice, something that's personal is sure. done for all the NAP. other uh, uh, big vaccines, haven't we? The measles, the mumps, and stuff. You can't go to school. Yeah, but I, I think yeah, but those have been like years and years in the making, and also those probably weren't formed during a very divisive time where everyone's being lied to, without a doubt. Well, I would I would need so you keep saying like everyone's being lied to. This is like oh, yeah. a, well, this is like a non statement. Like everyone's being lied to. Okay. Mm -hmm. What does that have to do with the vaccine production? Because if, if if these media people are telling them to get the vaccine or that the vaccine is safe and and these people have lied and been caught in lies or what lies though? Like everyone lie I, I just like if if your if your uh qualification for trusting a medical consensus is are the media people lying? Then you never would have gotten like any medical treatment ever. Like you, have, have you ever gone to the doctor for anything? The media was lying at some point during the administration of that treatment too. It, there has to be a relationship. And all the wealthy and powerful people out there, they were the first ones to get the vaccine, you know? It's not like they're waiting and like smirking at us, like, hmm, have fun. Like Elon Musk, Tucker Carlson, Joe Biden, they were the first ones to get that shit. And they are, you know, safer for it yeah i mean they, yeah they might be fine i mean we'll see i guess uh long term what happens here i mean i don't really know what's going to happen um we'll see if the treatment thing comes out i did want to ask you because we we mentioned earlier uh we we're talking about groupers what do you think about the proud boys i uh, i'd say they're a little cringe uh bordering on extremely cringe uh depending on how charitable i'm feeling that day <laughs> okay <laughs> so do you think it's more of like a like a larp group or do you think they're effective um i think they're brown shirts you know i think they're they're like fashy patrols that go to stir shit uh they like to take videos of themselves fighting antifa make themselves out to be the victim they like starting fist fights and rile people up because it 
drives popular support for far right groups. Yeah, I, th I think they're pretty good at what they do, you know? Getting Enrique Torrio to deflect against criticisms of white supremacy was a pretty good move. Enrique is a smart guy. He's also a Fed, apparently, but you know, that's 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 going to be about 40% of any people in an extremist group. Uh and uh yeah, I don't know. I think they're they're a pretty big issue, you know. I hope that they uh uh stop. That would be nice. Right. Weren't they designed though to to go to these events and protect speakers and such or or attendees of events i think they always say that well no i think it was gavin mcginnis started them and they were like we're here to beat people up i, I there's some speech of his he's the proud boys was like a men's club that he put together to have the manly men start fights with antifa or whatever the fuck else um i mean they might say they want to go to places to protect like i don't know uh, Milo Yiannopoulos or whatever, but we can all say that, right? I mean, you know, Antifa says they protect the city. That probably doesn't mean much to you. So, um, it, no, I, I, I think they're, I think they like to start fights because it's good for their movement. I mean, have, pro have Proud Boy fights in general where, for the most part, were they the ones who started it or the ones who reacted? Pretty sure and, they um, start fights all the time. I, I don't have like a breakdown, like a point by point, but like, I'm pretty sure there have been like very, demonstrated examples of them starting those fights but like wait i i want to ask though because i'm genuinely curious would you yeah. care either way what do you mean would like, you would care a proud boy well if they reason? if they started the fights or if they were merely responding to them would it make a difference to you yeah or? yeah i think so if like if 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 there is a big speaker coming to a campus or something and we either know antifa is there or or antifa is likely to be there where there's a possibility and proud boys show up and um if they show up and start beating someone up because they're wearing an antifa shirt or a, holding a f antifa flag or something i think that's a different story than than um re reacting to violence from antifa if yeah, antifa's well, I... throwing shit at at attendees or you know violently attacking these attendees and the proud boys go in there and kick the crap out of Antifa, I think that's a completely different story than going up to someone and fighting them because they're holding an Antifa flag. No, I'd, I'd agree. I think, so, I mean, I don't have, like, a, a breakdown of all of their f fights in front of me, but I, I do know, at least, that I've covered um, uh, situations where they have a, a deliberately initiated violence. They're, they're certainly intent on escalating violence. That's, that's clear enough. Uh, they definitely don't go to places to, like, calm people down and decrease the likelihood of violence. They do go there... Um, like looking for a fight right i mean they even brag about that in their in their stuff plus the private chat messages i think some were leaked where they were doing some like uh nazi shit or not maybe like white supremacist shit and a bunch of their members are kind of like also aligned with those groups i mean i don't know if you want to promote safety on uh on campuses uh i don't think the proud boys are going to decrease the likelihood of violence when you head on over there all right, so we we are. I'm, I just checked the time. Finally, we are a little over an hour, so I do want to. I do want to have a couple quick things, quick responses. Yeah, not, not to like get you on anything, but I don't. You know, no, um, not me. Or to have so, a vote. Yeah. So for, first of all, with with the Proud Boys going to these events and with Kyle showing Kyle right now showing up uh, uh, in Kenosha, don't you think that, or do you think? Sorry, uh, do you think that this is a? These are people going to this because the police aren't doing their job or that these uh event security aren't doing their job yes no that i agree with 100 okay. percent. the police have had a there was a long history of the police turning their back on uh uh demonstrations between the left and the right because they want violence between the two groups uh they do this with police riots race riots they did this they did this i think in kenosha as well uh i do think that the police uh often do a terrible job controlling protests in this country do you think um that in 2020, during the 2020 uh, riots, do you think that generally the National Guard should have been present? Because I know a lot of governors were, or at least a couple of governors, I know it was happening that they were not, they were not sending the National Guard into these cities. I, I, what they, what they needed was, um, well, most of the BLM protests didn't need nobody showing up. Uh, for the, for the places where things did get a little nasty, um, I, the issue that I have is that a good a good implementation of the National Guard could theoretically be a good thing. If all they did was formed walls and protected residential streets, that would be an acceptable use of their power, I think. Uh, you do have to control riots responsibly. 
Um, uh, if they had enough police to do that themselves, then they should have. Without knowing like the specific considerations, it's hard to say on a case by case basis. The issue is that when people were calling for the National Guard, they weren't calling for the Guard to come in to control the riots. They were calling the Guard to come in and kill the rioters. Even Trump was saying that, like, just go in and shoot them, treat them like enemies. And if that's the case, then that's I am. Funny, though. Uh, I don't think it's very funny for a leader <laughs> of a nation to say they should kill <sighs> protesters. I mean, it's probably not very. It's probably not very. Um, you know responsible or any of that but i think it's pretty funny what when is, he said if the looting starts the shooting uh, or the looting starts the shooting starts i mean i guess uh i don't know maybe in some like uh -huh, i mean i think that's that political violence we were talking groups. about in the beginning where something is needed to deter the this uh this um failure to abide by you know and it's not like they're just they're they're not abiding by some stupid law, but if they're like looting from someone else's business or someone's house and they're smashing windows and burning things down, I feel like then you some should sort still of, not send some the sort army of strong. In. I think some sort of strong uh, pushback was needed. Like what? I mean, I, I'm not sure exactly. I'm not you know I'm not a professional in this area. I'm sure there are people who uh, who it's their job to decide that. But well, it's a First Amendment right, isn't it, to organize? Not to smash windows or burn or burn things or loot. Sure, but none of those amendment? none of those warrant the death penalty, do they? No, but they they warrant uh, riot control and getting people out and possibly curfews. Which I I know this is you know I guess technically authoritarian stuff, but I mean I think that that we have to protect people who live here. You know, I mean, sure. people, well, what people you're who talking agree about with BLM right were having their businesses destroyed. Sure, but what you're talking about right there is riot control. If the goal is to steer the riots towards less destructive avenues, to reduce the number of people hurt, you know, so-and-so, that is how you control riots well. Historically, in all developed countries, that's just how you do it, you know. You send the guard in to just go ahead and shoot everyone. I mean, this is a... <laughs> Well, it's a somewhat less effective way of handling. Probably. Things. I mean, so I also funny. don't. I also don't know. Like, I get. I get how people could take that, but I don't. I think that was more of like a metaphor. Like, I, I don't think he legitimately wanted people to go up and start shoot, like firing into crowds of protesters don't who you, were becoming so unruly. Don't you think it's interesting that this conversation started with you thinking the media should be sued for calling Rittenhouse white supremacist, but now you're sort of a little blasé about the president of the United States just casually saying we should shoot. Well, that was that was kind of I don't think it's funny to ruin a young kid's life who, who self-defended himself and Why was braver well, than well, any of on, us wait. and if, braver if, than the and the cops who were there. If the army gunning down protesters is funny, then Rittenhouse's life being ruined no, is no, hysterical. No, it's a funny metaphor. I, I don't think it would necessarily be funny for that to actually happen. Let, oh, let okay. Well, I mean, no, well, I, uh, well, uh, we, you know, uh, all. I think it's funny that he tweeted Biden that. Like, I, I find just... a lot of things that Trump. Well, no, Biden, Biden didn't do anything funny. funny. Biden's a retard. Oh, he's, well, he's a very funny guy. He he farted in front of the Queen recently or something, and he well, and and <laughs> you know, uh, the, the, see the issue with um with the humor bit here, right? I mean, you say it's yeah. funny, but like, like, it's funny in that it's audaciously awful, or. Because kind of. I think it's. The, I think it. I think it received a lot of shock, especially coming from Trump. I mean, Trump's. Trump tweeted a lot of things that that received very uh, a lot of attention. People were, you know, shocked and uh, scared or whatever. Like, I think that's. I mean, not really the mark of a good president, though, right? I mean, you know, you can get your funny men on Netflix, but when it comes to the presidency, I think. Sort well, of I, well, I would argue that it's funnier that it was coming from the president. I mean, it didn't result in anything like that, did it? Well, I mean, Barr was in the process of using sedition charges against BLM protesters, which would have been a violation of the First Amendment. And that one uh, general that the Republicans hate, what's his name? The one who said he wants to understand uh, white rage. Is it, was it Mattis? Was uh, it him? He, Millie. He, was the, he actually had really? to yeah, push Trump to not send in the army to shoot protesters. So, I mean, it very well could have happened were it not for the cucked uh, the, the feminazis on, on hand, you know? I just, I, I think that this is one of the concerns I have, I'm not levying any charges, but this is one of the concerns I have, I think, with, with the whole, like, comedy and politics. I mean, I do think politics is funny. I laugh about a lot of bad shit here, but we there has to be something underlying it, you know? So when you say, because I'll just say from my perspective, when you say, you know, oh, it was funny when yeah. he, he made that comment, when the looting shots, the shooting darts, I genuinely don't know if you just think it's funny because it's bad, you think it's funny because it's good, or you don't know the answer yourself. It comes off to me, and this is just my perspective, like you have no opinions outside of kind of nihilistic, 
a cowardly inability to own a strict set of positions that you would be willing to defend. That's how it appears to me, like, like cowardice masking itself as a sort of ironic detachment. But I could be wrong. That's just the impression that I get. Okay. Um, someone, I do, I really do want to finish up. Someone, uh, someone did ask me to ask you where you think, uh, outside of what you want, um, where you think America will be in 10, 15 years. Um, do you have like some sort of prediction? Um, uh, not many, not many positive ones. I think, um, I don't know if we're going to be able to hold things together for a while, but climate change, if left unaddressed, is going to be a real issue. I think it's also going to fuck massively with our, our domestic politics. Even if it's economically manageable, it's going to be like, you know, oh, the rest of the world did this. Like, we'll plunge further into isolationism. Shit like that could be really, really bad. So I hope we can avoid that. All right. And then, um, Vosh, for my, for my followers, people, where can people find you? Where are all of your... <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm a I'm a Bloodborne streamer, so if you just search that on YouTube, you can probably find me. Uh, no, no, I'm I'm Vosh. Uh, I imagine there's probably a big old ideological wall between most of the people who watch you and most of the people who watch me. But, oh, for uh, sure, yeah, yeah. But you know, uh, you you can come here and call me fat if you want. Uh, but yeah, just search Vosh and whatever. And uh, likewise, though, you have the good sense to have your name and branding on your webcam, which I did eventually get showing on my stream. Uh, yeah, where actually, can people uh, find you? Oh, well, so people can find me. If you look up Matt Andrews on YouTube, I should be the first uh, person because I'm the only person who I think uploads with this name, really. Um, unfortunately, I I'm in a race to beat another Matt Andrews who's the most subscribed Matt Andrews on YouTube with 8,000 subs. I really want to beat him. Um, but I just got, yeah, I just got this green screen from Elgato or whatever. It was only like $150. Green screen is um, terrifying. I'm not really, I'm no not really good with tech. Well, yeah, I'm not really good with the. Well, I'm in my I'm in my bedroom. I'm not going to put my green screen down right now because my room's a mess. But, but uh, yeah, I'm not really good with tech. Someone help me with that. But yeah, Matt Andrews on YouTube. Um, I don't really tweet or anything, so I guess yeah, the best place is YouTube. I have a Discord server there that, of course, everyone is welcome in, uh, and um, that's probably the best place to find me. But Vosh, thank you for joining us. Um, no, it was my pleasure. I appreciate the convo, and I hope you have a wonderful yeah, night. Yeah, and I don't think. Uh, I don't think we agree on a lot. I don't think my viewers will agree with you a lot, but I do think it is a uh, thing is good that you did it. I still enjoyed the convo. That's what matters yep. most. You take care. You, okay. Yep. You too.